To him be the glory, both now and forever. Heaven will be full of the ceaseless praises of Jesus. Eternity, thine unnumbered years, shall speed their everlasting course, but forever and forever to him be the glory. Is he not a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek? To him be glory. Is he not king forever, king of kings and lord of lords, the everlasting father? To him be glory forever. Never shall his praises cease. That which has brought with blood deserves to last will immortality endures. The glory of the cross must never be eclipsed. The luster of the grave and the resurrection must never be dimmed. O oh, Jesus, thou shalt be praised forever. Long as immortal spirits live, long as the Father's throne endures forever, forever, unto thee shall be glory. Believer, you are anticipating the time when you shall join the saints above in ascribing all glory to Jesus. But are you glorifying him now? The apostles' words are, to him be glory both now and forever. Will you not this day make it your prayer, Lord, help me to glorify thee? I am poor, help me to glorify thee by contentment. I am sick, help me to give thee honor by patience. I have talents, help me to extol thee by expending them for thee. I have time, Lord, help me to redeem it that I may serve thee. I have a heart to feel, Lord, let me my heart feel no love but thine, and glow with no flame but affection for thee. I have a head to think, Lord. Help me to think of thee and for thee. Thou hast put me in this world for something, Lord. Show me what that is and help me to work out my life purpose. I cannot do much, but as the widow put in her two mites, which were all her living, so, Lord, I cast my time and eternity, too, into thy treasury. I am all thine, take me, and enable me to glorify thee now in all that I say, in all that I do, and with all that I have. Whereby they have made thee glad. And who are thus privileged to make the Saviour glad? His church, his people? But is it possible he makes us glad? But how can we make him glad? By our love? Ah, we think it so cold, so faint, and so indeed we must sorrowfully confess it to be. But it is very sweet to Christ. Hear his own eulogy of that love in the golden canticle. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love than wine. See, loving heart, how he delights in you. When you lean your head on his bosom, you not only receive, but you give him joy. When you gaze with love upon all his glorious face, you not only obtain comfort, but impart delight. Our praise, too, gives him joy, not the song of the lips alone, but the melody of the heart's deep gratitude. Our gifts, too, are very pleasant to him. He loves to see us lay our time, our talents, our substance upon the altar, not for the value of what we give, but for the sake of the motive from which the gift springs. To him the lowly offerings of his saints are more acceptable than the thousands of gold and silver. Holiness is like frankincense and myrrh to him. Forgive your enemy, and you make Christ glad. Distribute your, of your substance to the poor, and he rejoices. Be the means of saving souls, and you will give him to see of the travail of his soul. Proclaim his gospel, and you are a sweet savior unto him. Go among the ignorant, and lift up the cross, and you will have given him honor. It is in your power even now to break the alabaster box, and pour the precious oil of joy upon his head, as did the woman of old, whose memorial is to this day set forth wherever the gospel is preached. Will you be backward then? Will you not perform your beloved Lord with the myrrh and alloys and cassia of your heart's praise? Yes, ye ivory palaces, ye shall hear the songs of the saints.